I want to just really try and flesh out in a very short time, we haven't got a lot of time here, and uh, what it is that we've been doing with these children with the learning difficulties. Um, I first met Mark when I walked into that Centre of Alternative Te Technology in 1974 off the hills, and this mustachioed guy showed me around, gave me a cup of tea. I thought that was interesting. And then lo and behold, at Osteopathic College a few years later, there he was again. You know, he keeps turning up in my life. Can't get rid of him. <laughs> so some years ago, when we came to many of these conferences, Mark published a paper that he'd done work with, these, with children, with, with, with Elizabeth Thomas. And I said, that's interesting. Let me help you see if we can put it together uh, and teach it. And we spent most of the noughties teaching it in the UK and Germany. And it's quite difficult to give you a flavor of what it is um, you spend a year with a child, what, how are you using AK in that way. So I've tried to try and put it into uh, a little presentation, more to inspire than really totally inform you. So this is more like a TED talk, if you like. So coming to you from Oxford in, in England, um, but I wanted to just take a short loop because as John Kerry kindly mentioned, I had the great honor and pleasure of going with Cathy and Francois to, to uh, to our colleagues in Korea recently, and I went back and talked to their whole meeting, and a very impressive group, I'm afraid Dr. Lee has had to go home, but do, if you can save your pennies, plan on going to Seoul in a couple of years' time, because they're a very friendly, lovely, and very impressive uh, powerhouse of, of AK knowledge, there's the board. Uh, and they have written quite a few very interesting papers, uh, which you can see uh, published in English. So quite a uh, exciting organization to go to, and not forgetting where else we went on that trip. Um, here's our Tokyo team, some of whom you've seen here this uh, week. So, going back to my script, can you remember when you had to learn to read? Probably you've already forgotten it. You kind of take it for granted. This is perhaps the primary skill you have to master in school, and uh, sometimes we, we forget it. But for some people, it can be a painful and almost torturous process. And these are the kids, perhaps 10% of the population, who struggle with this whole process of learning. And, and as Steinbeck said, it's a horrible task if you don't find it easy. Some of us learn to read almost before we've even noticed it. Others struggle um, extremely. So these are the ones, we're talking about pesky problems and pesky patients. These kids can be pesky because Although we're all made of love fundamentally, if that ability to shine and blossom is stopped, and going through school is a torturous process, you very soon start to find that that love is clouded over by a cloud of unknowing, and you become frustrated, and when you're frustrated, you can easily become uh, annoying and difficult. And here's a quote from somebody I found about the struggle that occurs if you are unable to make that journey through school that we all have to make in modern industrial society. So here's our Vitruvian man. Um, what I, what um, Leonardo was looking at, the wor workings of the universe. He envisaged this, what he called a cosmography of the microcosm. And it's not all happy in the working of the, of the universe of modern children, as we know. And here is another version of the same. And maybe things are going a little bit awry for some of these kids. Um, Mark went to the London version of this, and I went to the Oxford version of this, this Food and Behavior Conference recently, last month. Um, very interesting conference, where we noticed that a 41 billion Australian dollar increase in the cost of mental disorders in a three-year period in the UK just recently. And in children, the most prevalent is this mental health condition, uh, ADHD, autism, and related neurodevelopmental disorders of behavior and learning. If you get a chance to read Dr. Alex Richardson's book, very interesting book on they are what you feed them, I think it's called. Um, so these descriptions are not really explanations. They are a description. Some people deny that these, th these conditions even exist. But um, they're really overlapping. Uh, many of children who have a, uh, a description or a diagnosis of dyslexia also may show certain dyspraxic, ASD, uh, ADHD 
uh, aspects. Now, I know I'm talking to many of you who, who uh, with Susan and Keane's ex exciting work, you know all about this. And so it's kind of nice to bring our different uh, looking at the same things uh, in, in slightly different uh, ways. So we know that the genes load the gun. Uh, our background, dyslexia, for example, is probably a, a, uh, a genetically passed on condition. You'll often find it in the family, although until very recently, um, nobody was going to diagnose it. I've never had a diagnosis of dyslexia, but working with hundreds and hundreds of dyslexic, I can see certain patterns of, of mild dyslexic patterns in myself. But when I was a child, such things really didn't exist very commonly. But the environment pulls the trigger. Okay? So the experiences that we have of childhood make all the difference. A study a few years ago in an Oxford, uh, not an Oxford, an o a Scotland young offenders home, they said, how many of these young men sort of 15 to 18 year olds, do you think are dyslexic? And the guy said, well, we don't really know. Um, bearing in mind, it's probably somewhere on the spectrum of five to 10% of the population. What they found was when they tested them, they were 50% of them. Now, dyslexia is not the cause of all crime, I'm not saying that, but if you are frustrated and not succeeding, especially if you're highly intelligent, you're likely to get into trouble. If you don't have the family to support you, you're likely to get into bad trouble. So we can offer some of these children, some of these families who are struggling, some, uh, some light at the end of the tunnel. We don't have all the answers by any means. You're not going to change the fundamentals of these things, but you're going to make a big difference. And so I, I really wanted to take this time to share with you a few of the experiences that we've had. Um, and, and thanks to Mark putting all these different tools we'd learned from, from the AK world, the greats, um, we've been exper experimenting with over the years. Me to take him to mm. you was um, a variety of just sort of strange um, behaviours really that were slightly off from mm. the usual. Mm. He was showing there was an excess of energy. He would charge backwards and forwards endlessly, always with a stick, no purpose as far as I could see. Mm. He um, paid no attention to his peers. Mm. Didn't, uh, they didn't register. He was not interested in them at all. Easily frustrated. Um, and he, he would uh, scream and he would hit himself and bang his head in frustration. Lots of sort of, I hate myself, um, self-loathing going on. Mm -hmm. So I took him to you thinking I, would, I was after sort of a human MOT, mm -hmm. if you like. Mm -hmm. So this is one mother that I recorded last year. Some of you may have seen this little clip. I've got uh, other ones here that you haven't seen. But this is an example of a mother what are you going to do with this child who's running around screaming? Nobody really knows. And you can spend your time going around to various professionals, and they're all skilled in their own way. But I think what we're trying to do, and I think what the AK tool really gives us is a chance to approach this um, in, at a number of different levels. And here's the Sunflower Trust website, because it's a great opportunity to, to have an organization that will fund um, a, a year's treatment uh, spread over several, uh, several months um, to help some of these families, particularly the ones that you really want to get hold of are very often the ones that can't find the funds to spend time with you. Um, so I'm very grateful for, for the trust for funding some of the, the work that we've done. Um, so we're back to our triad of health. Right. And you can't really help these children unless you really take this triad seriously and you look at all three sides. I'm going to focus not so much on the structure today, but more on the mental side. But we, we start with the structure. Because if you look at these kids and you look at them in detail, you're trying to get the car on the road, first of all. And very many of them have various microscopic and sometimes not so microscopic func structural disturbances, as you know well. Um, so these gross and subtle biomechanical dysfunctions uh, can lead to more uh, poor motor control and quality of physical awareness. So, here he is. Um, I took this uh, earlier in the year, just on the first intake. We spend an hour with the kids. We put them through a number of, uh, of, of assessments. And you can see this little guy here um, is all crooked. Uh, he's struggling. And uh, if you want to feel bad, it helps 
just stand like this and put your head down and, 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 and look like that. If you want to feel good, it helps to stand up and put a silly grin on your face. So these kids are already helping themselves feel worse than you need to, but that's the way they are their trap and they, they don't know anything else, so our job is to try and help them change that. And the first place to start is in the structure. Go down there, and, and turn around there. Look at them, and, and you can test there. them in all the ways you already this, know. You? Now, pull down to the floor that way. Oh, very good. Pull down here. You're strong, aren't you? <laughs> yes, so, there's a, a strain within the bone. So what we're going to do... It's a great opportunity just, also to actually make connection and build trust. Again. Doing the physical work, all you're also dancing and dance, dance with Ooh. them. And so when it comes to the more so challenging emotional challenges, they are able and willing to, usually, to uh, play in. with you and play the whole journey. And, and the parent, well, is the mother, you're is sitting there watching. We only work with the parent in the room um, all times. They're making the journey yeah. with you. And it's, it is a bit like a journey. Yeah. It's a bit, your, your practice is your theater. You're, you're putting your show on every day, and you're taking them through this journey, Once these adventures, more, yeah. the adventures of personal yeah. discovery. It's a long curly what bit. the hell are you doing? It sometimes can get a bit They're wonky, often right? a bit frightened to start with, but they very soon get into it, it, and intro, they very soon relax and enjoy coming to see it. Okay. So I haven't got all the time in the world I'd like to, but sometimes the chemistry is of vital importance, particularly, I find, for those who have ADHD, uh, and referring back to Alex Richardson's work and the work of the, uh, the, beha uh, the um, Food and Behavior Trust, um, you're well aware of the research, perhaps, of Alex Richardson's on essential fatty acids. They did an interesting study in the UK on Dur the Durham study on changing dyslexia by increasing their fatty acid metabolism. Many children, not all, but those who, particularly those who are low on essential fatty acids, and the uh, three particularly, uh, respond very well. Not all of them respond very well because many of them have adequate amounts, but these kids are often burning up their nutritional uh, reserves very fast and or they're not even getting it in the first place because they're subject to uh, what we wouldn't call food at all because we're all basically made of water and food. And if you look at the first food that we get from our mother, we can see that that is of crucial uh, uh, importance. Here's a study done from McGill University in Canada uh, in Belarus showing that on average, there was a 5.9 um, point higher on IQ tests in children who had been breastfed for a substantial period. I tried to find some evidence for Australia uh, and here you can see the uh, graph. It's a bit old now. This is, this is 12 years old. Proportion of infants from newborn uh, to six months who are breastfed. Um, and you can see it's tailing off rather dramatically and rather sadly, really. Now, I'm just a man, so I don't have to go through all that mastitis and so on. Uh, so I do appreciate it. it's not always an easy job to breastfeed. I've had three daughters myself. And, and the kind of light bulb moment for me with my wife was having um, a wonderful breastfeed cancer come round to our house on our second child, third child, uh, and show her, uh, you've got enough milk, spurted right across the room. So, you know, you sometimes need, and for some reason, I don't know why the health service isn't very good at helping pe people do this wonderful job. But the, bre the first food that we get should be great. But unfortunately, we're building a lifestyle now, and thanks to Scott for this great picture, uh, uh, the Vitruvian man is degenerating, uh, and uh, we are bringing up our children in this strange new world that we've created. Is it any wonder that they're getting a bit screwed up? 30% of poorer American children are already obese. 10% uh, of UK NHS funded goes on, on diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is largely an optional disease, and yet it's going to cost the NHS in Britain so much that we can't really support it. But getting children to eat good food is not so easy at the best of times. Some of these children are difficult to feed. We do accept, okay. Um, so the cost uh, is, is growing. This is what some people call food. It's amazing. This is what they eat adults. And then we're down to this. Uh, recently I heard Robert Lustig's wonderful presentation, who's a, a pediatric endocrinologist about the 
rise of Shiga. So let's look at the mental side of things. I suddenly seem to have, my time seems to have gone very fast. I was told I get 10 minutes. So we take them through up a staircase of things that you need to be able to deal with emotionally. So the job of the clinician is to see all this shut down this, but not really to buy into it, not believe it. Once we started on this mental journey, I don't know if that's the right way yeah. to put it, but that was, that was really quite extraordinary. Yeah. We have these negative associations we build into ourselves when we have difficult experiences. And our job is to unscramble those. And you can do that by finding, uh, by challenging them to think of these things, to, to, uh, to respond this way. I'll show you in a minute how we do it. And you'll find that the B&E points will show up and you can clear out that meridian. And you're taking that little virus off the hard disk and improving, uh, for improving their, their system. So the, the safer you make them, the more you can challenge them. And we have to make this distinction between behavior, who we are, and our identity, um, who we really are, what you do and what you are. Okay, now, what I want you to do now is I want you to write your name. Most of these children... Yeah. This is a grandmother here bringing up her grandchild, her mixed-race granddaughter, and the mother has had psychiatric problems and the father's disappeared. She was a, a, a wonderful woman, and I was really happy to Very help Very good. Her. Now, hold that arm here. Push up to the ceiling. Sky. Okay, now say it again. Sky. They'll Why weaken to their own name. Their self-identity is, um, is damaged. Um, and if you clear that out, building through these uh -oh. steps. <laughs> um, and uh, you can change them. We, we, we take the old cross-crawl exercises. His Mark's sister, I think, did this wonderful uh, uh, poem, which is both allegorical and useful to do, do the, the cross-call exercise. The tree is green, they're young, they have, they have deep roots in their family, they've got warm heart. They're not asleep, they're awake, they, they, the trunk is strong, they have a strong body, they spread their brows wide. And basically, the lesson for us all is that we have already all we need inside. We just have to get rid of those things that are stopping now, us. Now, push up uh, again, nice and strong. And this is the work of Carl Ferrari, which we borrowed, where children often, when you put a pen in almost anyone, if we had the time, we'd probably, anyone oh, here who has this, yeah. we'd find you go so weak to a pen, even here. as an adult, holding the pen in yes, your writing hand, right but not in your non-writing hand. If I and, move my and I'm finger, sure some of you know this, this whole process. But it's, not only is it useful in itself, but it's useful as a pattern interrupt to the child and the parent to see that things that they didn't know are hindering them and holding them back. So, uh, I won't go to that, just stop that for a moment. One of the things we borrowed is because Mark and I have both spent a long time learning neuro-linguistic program, which is a wonderful fit for AK and a useful tool to help bring changes with these children. And this is the, the spelling strategy, thanks to um, Bandler and Grindler, uh, developed this. Now, you'll see her looking up and as if she is reading it from the board. What she's doing is that because good spellers have a visual recall strategy, they need to be able to see what they, they recall. And, and so what we're trying to do is build that in for her so she has a memory of what it looks like. She isn't reading it off any board, but she's reading it off her mental board, all right? Not the board, read it. C O uh, yeah. N good. C E. Very good. Now, look at the end. Look at that N at the end. Okay? Can you see it? Now, just read the whole word backwards, just for hell of it. N O I T. Mm -hmm. She can't see anything. She's seeing it in her mind. R T. Good. N E C. Yeah. N O C. Wow! <laughs> See, she can spell it forward and backwards. How you're the champion. Woo! <laughs> now, that is a useful tool. Not only does it teach her a skill, and if you practice it enough, you get that visual recall strategy which, uh, and, and the chunking process of chunking it down, but also the child experiences a success. And one of the things we'll find, I haven't got a lot of time, but one of the things we'll find is most of these children, the biggest change you'll see is in their sense of identity, their confidence. And if you don't have the confidence in life, you don't try, you don't go to things, you don't travel around the world to these conferences, you don't learn from the masters, you deprive yourself of some of these great experiences that we're all having. So 
I feel that's one of the great tools that AK can offer us is, is helping these children with these kind of confidence building processes. So we build them and give them an, an, a, a, an incantation, what they can do, rather than incantation, what they can't do. Here's Magnus. Uh, this is the son of the woman you heard talking earlier. Um, and the biggest uh, change is his interest in other people. Right. That's the biggest one, and the one that also worried me the most to a certain extent. Yes, it was actually, because going through life not being interested in people around you is not good. <laughs> so, oh, I, no, I'll just give you that bit more. Sorry, I shouldn't have cut her off. Anyway, he, he said, she asked him, well, was there any change since we haven't been going to Clive? And she sa he said, no. And he said, well, yes, maybe. Uh, when I wake up in the morning, I think it's going to be a really bad day. But it turns out... It's already, already and always a nice day. So that's not so bad. So a bad day that always turns out to be really nice is not a bad achievement. So in a way, we're struggling to find ways to validate these things for the world. But one of the best ways, really, as Mark mentioned, is what better measure of value is than what the patients themselves notice. So that's one of the key tools that we've tried to do, is that we put these children through a series of sieves before they come and after they've been with us for a, a, eight months, a year or something. Uh, we ask the parents and teachers about their attention deficit. We have their 24 questions there, what motor disturbance and other 24 questions, impulsivity. Um, these are the sort of comments people m make when they start about their children. We ask them to write down what, they've, what they come for. It's always struggling at school. They have said this thing is dyslexic. They continue telling he's stupid, bottom of the class. And then we put them, they get the parents to fill in um, 95 separate questions. So there's a 570 possible levels of difficulty uh, on these kind of questions, not only the reading, writing, spelling, but also things like, you know, nonverbal communication, sense of timing, et cetera, et cetera. So then we can compare them at least as far as what the parent's impression of the changes that they experience with their children. Um, and these are some of the kinds of changes. I'm going to whip through them rather fast. But so this is what the parents, they reckon here, here's Magnus getting his little certificate at the end of the whole process. Uh, they reckon overall 40% improvement on the baseline score. And this is what they look like. So before, they're, and you want to get these scores as low as you can, all right? Um, so you can see before, we break them down into these dyspraxia, dyslexia, ASD, and so on and so forth. So these are the kind of changes we're seeing. Um, depression, anxiety from 33 to 13, ADHD down from 26 to 15%, personality disposition uh, 21 to 11, um, and so on. Uh, and this is the one that you see most often, is, is this, so the self-esteem tends to change dramatically, which is, which is really encouraging to, to, to see them. Um, you want to get down in the low in terms of the negatives. We're, we're recording negatives here, so we're looking at the drop from all the things that stop them having self-esteem. So these are the kinds of patterns that we saw with, with him. So improved concentration, improved confidence, more responsibility, and, and so on. Reduced anger when something goes wrong. Much more confident. Now, I'm not telling you all this to blow my own trumpet, because you can all do this just as well and practice. Uh, much better than I can. So uh, it's not about an ego trip. It's about just sharing with you some of the things that AK can, can help us do to change the world one person at a time. Um, here he is. So an overall expense, in this case, of about 1,500 Australian dollars, about eight months of contact time broken into small chunks, coming perhaps once a month or so, uh, um, and uh, eight hours, really, there. Um, and so we, we got this change, as Mark said, physically, neurologically balanced, balanced, healthy and well, integrated children and young people naturally feel better, perform better, achieve more, have greater self-confidence and self-esteem, get on better with others, and make most of our work. No, it was not a mysterious journey. Mm -hmm. It did, it, it was sort of building blocks, isn't yeah. it, where you built a yeah. sort of happier person in mm -hmm. the end. Um, there was, I think, in the middle, um, where he was also, he, he enjoyed the attention, mm. but at that point his interest started sort of dipping yeah. and it became that bit harder to do the exercises yeah. at home and to, yeah. um, I wouldn't say that I, I thought it was a waste of time by any mm. means, but it did get harder yeah. at that time. 
So it's not an easy process sometimes, and you do, and this is wonderful to have a really supportive mother or parent, um, and that's of course the challenge for some of the most disadvantaged children, they don't have anyone in their life to support them and hold them. And frankly, if, you, if they don't have that, we can only do so much. But with that, we can do something and add to what these fantastic heroic parents are able to do. And to, to finish off, I just wanted, I saw this on talking about TED Talks, I saw this the other day. Um, Professor uh, Maitra has been, he's, a, he's into education and technology. And as he says, it's quite fashionable to say that the educational system is broken. It's not broken, it's a wonderfully constructed just that we don't need it anymore, it's outdated. Because what that educational system is designed to do is to produce bureaucrats to, to run the empire of the 19th century, where people have to sit down in desks and comply to clock time and so on. What he did, because he, he was teaching in, I think, Delhi, students well-funded, middle-class students to do uh, information technology. He thought, I wonder what the kids on the other side of this brick wall or in the slums, I wonder what they could do with a computer. So he stuck a computer in the wall and left it there. And kids started to come along and play with it. And before long, they taught themselves the computer process. And some of them even taught themselves English. These are kids who don't have any education. And people said, ah, well, one of your students must have come by and taught them. So he took it away and stuck a computer hundreds of miles away in a village and did the same thing. So children have this innate ability to learn. It's what gets in the way to stop them learning. And if you have some of these difficulties, it's a big roadblock in the way. And you cannot think that you are a good person and you're a worthy person if that roadblock is staring you in the face. So our job with AK is to move that roadblock around a little bit and let them flourish. And to end, I'd just like to read you. I got an email the other day, and again, I'm not, I'm not doing this to blow my own trumpet, but because uh, it's not really about me, and I learned a lot of this from, from Mark and, and all the greats uh, in the AK world, but this is the kind of thing that makes all this hard work possible. One of the parents said, I just wanted to say a massive thank you for everything you've done for, we'll call him James. He really has done so well at school, and when we look at where he was a year ago, the difference is quite staggering. His confidence with his ability to learn, read, and write has increased twofold. He still doesn't enjoy doing homework, but it's not the battle it used to have to get him to even sit down to look at it. From the bottom of our hearts, we thank you for, our time and, for your time and patience. An amazing work you've done for the entire time. Now, that's not me, that's about you. This is what we can all do, and this really, um, you know, we have to remember that things are evolving faster and faster. And, uh, Education is changing, children are changing, but we can use some of these, these skills because it's never too late to have that happy child. And thanks to George for teaching us all this stuff. Uh, and this is where we can go from despondency to achievement. Thank you.